reading from Jeremiah. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nation. Then I said, Lord God, truly, you do not, I do not know how to speak, for I'm only a boy. But the Lord said to me, Do not say, I'm only a boy. For you shall go to all to whom I send you, and you shall speak whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Ever felt overwhelmed? I have. I assume you have too. You know that debilitating sense that life at this particular moment is just a little too much. Too many things to do, too many people to see, too many unsolved problems. Life pressing down on you with so much force, it can be hard to breathe. You really want to go to the right? And the whole world is telling you you need to go to the left. You just can't keep up. Well, like a lot of the characters in Scripture, episodes in Jeremiah's life easily reflect our own. Scholars describe Jeremiah as courageous and persistent. But they also describe him as shy, sensitive, and introverted, whose natural inclinations were at odds with his deep sense of mission bring God's message to the people. Given all that, I think the story of Jeremiah would make a great movie. Think about it. Conflict, doubt, angst. Great character study. Now, if you were a movie casting director, who would you cast to play it? If I had a vote, I think I'd vote for Chadwick Boseman. You know who Chadwick Boseman is, don't you? He played Black Panther in the movies and Thurgood Marshall, James Brown. Not so long ago, Boseman tells the story of being at an outdoor concert with a friend. And their view was blocked because a few rows up, some guy insisted on standing up, obliterating everybody's view immediately behind him. The guy was wearing saggy pants, so you can only imagine what their view was. <laughs> After a few minutes, Bozeman had had enough. He left his seat and went over to try to convince the guy to stop blocking everybody's view. The man who'd been standing did not recognize Bozeman, didn't know who he was. After a few minutes of talking, Bozeman went back to his seat, and the guy who was standing up sat down. A reporter asked the actor where he got the courage to confront somebody he didn't know. Bozeman thought about that for a second and said, You know, that's a gift the characters give you. A dimension of yourself that you never had before. A dimension of yourself that you never had before. By calling Jeremiah, God was telling Jeremiah and us of this dimension of ourselves. We may not know, but we all have. It's God's little extra. It's a gift he's given to all of us. You have it. I have it. God wants us to use it. Jeremiah was more than what he thought he saw. You and I are more than what we think we see. As God was showing Jeremiah a little something about Jeremiah, God was also showing Jeremiah and us a little something about God. The early parts of the book of Jeremiah teach us three things about God, three things we should remember when we're overwhelmed. First, God knows everything. Second, God can choose people for what God wants them to do even before they're born. And third, God gives the authority to the people he calls. Yes. Let's take a minute to break those down. First, God knows everything about
about us. God knows everything about us. Boy. I'm, uh, I'm feeling some kind of way about that. I'm not, I'm not sure I want God to know everything about me. You know, we all hide things about ourselves, decisions we've made, or not made, people we've been with, personal shortcomings we know we have and have spent our whole lives trying to overcome. I don't know whether I want God to know everything about me because I don't know if I want to know everything about me. Well, guess what? God knows everything anyway. God knows it all. Our, de our deepest, darkest secrets. God knows all our stuff. Even the stuff buried so deep we may not fully realize it's even there. But the good news is, God loves us anyway. That explains why God wasn't hearing Jeremiah's arguments. Don't call me God, Jeremiah says. I don't have what it takes. You you just don't know. Well, but I do know. God says, I know it all. I know more about you than you know about yourself. I also know how that may make you feel. But it shouldn't. My arms were around you before you were even a thought. I am the Lord. Okay, learning number two. two. The second learning is God can choose people for what God wants them to do before they were born. God's knowledge of us, God's love for us, predates us. Isn't that something? God had things in mind for us before there was in us. The psalmist in Psalm 139 said as much when he wrote, My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. The beauty and the intimacy of the, and the foreverness of God's relationship with us is all right there. The Apostle Paul says that God has predestined all things according to the counsel of his will. All things. That means you. Been chosen. We've been chosen by God. You're here. I'm here. We are all here doing what we're doing, feeling what we're feeling, connecting with whom we're connecting, because we're on assignment. Our lives have a purpose. Our lives have meaning. Even during the most difficult days, Jeremiah is telling us that God is working for our good. Our call may not be as specific as Jeremiah's or come about as a result of direct dialogue with God. But make no mistake, you and I have been called. You and I have something to do for God. Maybe, just maybe, God chose you because God wants you to choose others. God's calling Jeremiah to prophesy to prophecy didn't mean Jeremiah suddenly turned into some mystical fortune teller. God's calling to Jeremiah simply meant Jeremiah was supposed to tell his people to repent and turn their lives to God. Full stop. Jeremiah was to be the example, <coughs> to live his life in such a way that others could see God's intention and love for us. Not a lot of difference between what Jeremiah was called to do and what you and I are called to do. You have given me the shield of victory, it says in Psalm 18. Your right hand also sustains me. Your loving care makes me great. You and I are destined for great things. The third thing we should learn from Jeremiah's dialogue with God is that God gives those he calls the authority to do what God wants. The Great Commission Jesus is directed to his disciples to go and teach all nations. This is applicable to us now as it was to them then. We have God's permission to be his disciples. We have the green light to 
bring God's word to all the world. We have the good God-keeping seal of approval to go forth in God's name. Yes. We have all the authority we're ever going to need. As Psalm 24 says, glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Now, we live out the Great Commission in lots of different ways, not the least of which is how we choose to live our lives. Allowing Jesus to inspire and direct our everyday choices. How we do what we do, how we conduct ourselves, the decisions we make, and how we treat each other. How do we see God's call? Hour to hour, day to day, week to week. Do we see it as a burden? A job we have so that we don't get in trouble? Or a blessing? A gracious gift from the God who loves us more than we love ourselves. How do we incorporate our own prophetic authority into our everyday lives? When we go to work, do we do our best? Are we seeking to improve, engage, and lift up? Setting an example for others to follow. When we're asked to help, do we do so begrudgingly? Or with a real Jesus-inspired attitude? to make things better. When we work in the church, whether in the kitchen or the sanctuary, do we give our time so that we can exercise our own personal authority, insisting that things be done our way and on our time, or do we see church work as an opportunity to further God's kingdom, to live in and lift up community, giving back to God in our small way in return to all that God has given us. When we pray, do we pray? Do we pray for others, even those outside our own orbit? Or do we only pray for people we like? Don't forget, we are on assignment. God gave you a fingerprint that no one else had so you can leave an imprint that no one else can. You didn't hear me, so I'll say that again. <laughs> God gave you a fingerprint that no one else has, so you can leave an imprint that no one else can. <laughs> Lead me to the rock that is higher than I, it says in Psalm 61. The rock that's higher than I. Okay. Knowing all this, decision should we make about how we live our life? Starting right now. How about let me think about this. How about how about this? I will live a life of faith and courage. I like that. Say it with me. I will live a life of faith and courage. Fuck. 
full of faith, because you'll never be without God's grace, God's mercy, God's redeeming, liberating, and life-giving love. Forget what lies behind. Trust Jesus to what lies ahead. And celebrate your victories today. They're real, they're tangible, and they matter. Feel free to think on those things the next time you feel overwhelmed. To quote the great prophets, Kirk of Franklin. <laughs> I know that I can make it. I know that I can stand. No matter what may come my way, no matter what may come my way, my life is in your hands. With Jesus, I can take it. With him, I know I can stand. No matter what may come my way, my life, my life is in your hands. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, 